Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to talk about uh, this lead code for, uh, 34A, design, take, tap, toe. This is an object design question. And it was asked by um, Amazon, Microsoft, and all the other big names. So uh, as the name suggests, it's basically a uh, design question. Uh, as you can see, so uh, we, the first step, what we do is to initialize the object. So uh, we are inputting, so we need to design uh, two functions, basically, uh, the tic-tac-toe initialization function, also the move function. Uh, the move function does two things. One is the uh, mark uh, the player to the position the player wants. And secondly, to check if, um, if the player um, wins after that move. Uh, so it's also a validation, uh, has the validation functionality. So let's look at this example, right? So um, first we initialize the tic-tac-toe uh, game object and has an input of three. So that means we have a three by three uh, board. And, um, and then we call the move function zero, zero is the coordinate, coordinate, uh, coordinate that, that um, the player is marking that position. So let's say zero, zero is the first row and first column, and one is the player one uh, marking that position. And the return of zero means no one wins after that move. And uh, the second, uh, second call of the function will be zero, two, and that's from player two. And zero two is the uh, first row and third column. So it's exactly here. And after that move, no one wins. That's why we turn a zero. And uh, the third move is from player one. And it's two two is the third row and third column. After that move, no one wins. That's why we turn a zero. And um, the fourth one is from um, uh, positions one and one. And it's from um, player two. And after the move, no one wins because it looks like this. So we return a zero. And um, the next move is from player one. And the position is uh, the third row and first column. And after the move, no one wins. Uh, yeah, that's why we return a zero. So you can see uh, the pattern right now, right? So uh, finally, after the player one mark, the third row and second column, and he wins. That's why the function return the one. So a brute force approach is to uh, after each 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 move, it check uh, the rows and columns and diagonal and also the anti-diagonal position. So um, let's look at this graph diagram. It's pretty helpful. So uh, the winning condition is will be um, if a, a player mark every position in a row or in a column or in a diagonal or in an anti-diagonal each one of them uh whoever mark all the position first will win so we basically essentially have uh, four conditions to check right so let's look take a look uh, at the code together so we first have uh, an initialization uh we basically initializing a uh, n by n grid or n by n matrix or n by n board and uh we also grabbing the n as a self dot n as a uh, object uh, attribute, and then in the in the move function, uh, essentially we are doing two things. One, you have to really move it uh, after the player uh, call that position, and then we have to mark uh, that position on the board. So it's exactly what is going on. Uh, so for example, a player is calling. A particular row and particular column so we pinpoint that spot on the board and then we mark that as a player so it could be uh, so basically for example uh, in the initialization will be an n by n uh, matrix with zero everywhere and player one comes in and then he mark um, at uh, a particular row and particular column or that spot and he mark at the as one or two, it depending on the player, the player ID. And then uh, just created some, some short end here. Uh, we initialize a variable of n. So basically we're grabbing self.n. So I don't need to uh, type self.n anywhere below. 
just for n and uh, also grabbing the matrix basically is just the self dot board so again this is some shorthand that i don't need to repeat this self dot board anywhere below the code that's why i just grab it assigned as a variable of the matrix so basically it's a list of a list and uh, as this diagram suggests we got four things to check right uh, the row and uh, if we mark everything in in the row or everything in the column it wins everything in the diagonal in the anti-diagonal it wins uh, whatever it comes first so um, this is some function that um, we, we will go through together so essentially for all the rows we check row we check a particular row if that uh, position is marked everywhere across the row if it is immediately just return uh, the player id and it wins same for column um, we just so for all the columns available all the way from uh, 0 to n minus 1 because it's the index we're talking about and then we check that column whenever it returns a true and then we turn the player and immediately the player wins and also uh, we check in the diagonal and so uh, also the anti-diagonal so whenever if any one of these uh, condition meet and then immediately that stops the uh, entire move function and then return the player because that player wins and then the game finishes so check row um, let's look at the function together uh, for each row that each particular row that we're looking at we also check the uh, the, and then we have to check each individual, each uh, column for that row. If that, uh, that number is not equal to the player, because we're marking the player in here. If that number is not equal to a player ID, and in, immediately that stops and no more subsequent checking. Uh, and same for the check column function. So basically we're checking um all the columns within within a particular all the rows within a particular column if that um element is not equal to a player id uh immediately that, that breaks and then it returns a false um and uh, so we checked for all the rows and also checked all the columns if none of them works out and then we check the diagonal and diagonal is pretty straightforward right so it's i think it's we have a diagram in here. The diagonal looks like this. So we can see the column index and the row index is the same 0, 0, 1, 1, and 2, 2. So uh, it's pretty trivial. Um, we don't have to all check. I mean, there's only one diagonal. So that's why it's pretty straightforward, right? The same column ID, uh, column index, and also the same row index. I just call it D, D for diagonal. And for the anti diagonal, uh, it looks like this. So it's 0, 2. 1, 1, and 2, 0 for the 3 by 3 grid. And as you can see, if you're careful enough, you can see the sum of these two uh, indexes are the same. So 0 plus 2 equals 2, 1 plus 1 equals 2, 2 plus 0 equals 2, right? So whenever we are given a row index, we can use that formula to back out the column index. And the formula of that is the, the column index equals to n minus the row index minus 1. And then we can do exactly that. So uh, for For all the row index available from 0 to n minus 1, the column index is n minus r minus 1. Right? If, um, if all of them equals the player ID, uh, that will return a 2. Otherwise, if at least one of them is not equal to the player ID, it breaks out the function. So uh, this function works and we, after we submit it. And uh, it works, but it's not really efficient. As you can see, uh, it's, it works, but not very fast. Because there, as you look at the time complexity, um, let me scroll up. So time complexity is n to the power of n by n. So for example, I know for every move, we are iterating uh, n cells four times to check each of the columns and each row diagonal. Yes, exactly. So what it's saying is we will check uh, all the positions available and then we have to check um the columns the rows diagonal i and diagonal that's why we do it four times and uh, however the constants dropped that's why it's big o n um so 
uh, this is not very inefficient. In in it's not very sorry about that. So it's not very efficient uh, in terms of time complexity. For subspace complexity, we have an n by n grid, and that's why it's big of n square. And uh, it takes a lot of space, as you can as you can see. So uh, we can do some optimization about this, and that's why we have the because a follow up question of uh, this problem was um, could you do it better than uh, big O of n? square per move operation and uh, yes we can do that um, we have a optimized approach so essentially what it does is um, let me scroll down to the algorithm so this is a pretty clever design uh, we have an array so let's say we, let's consider an uh, m by three oops i think yeah i'm gonna make it bigger like this so uh, we have a what yeah i think it's better so we have a m by three uh board right so we have a so this one is the first row and this one is the second row and third row first column second column and third column and diagonal we have only one diagonal and also only one anti-diagonal so that's why it's only one spot and because we have three rows and three columns so we need to have a uh, three cells for the rows and three cells for column. So this is some initial setup as we can see uh, initialization. And uh, when we have a move, uh, for example, zero, zero, and, and from player one. So zero, zero is at the diagonal, right? And then we mark one in here. And also uh, zero is zero is in the first row, also in the first column, and it's from player one. So we can see one, one, and one. And then when the Second player comes in and then he marks uh, the spot of zero and two and first row and second column. And uh, as you can see, after the second player comes in and decrease the value. So originally it was one and now the second player actually have a decrement. So, and then one becomes a zero. And also the columns because it's talking at um, the index of two and then it's the third column and then it's a player two and decrement it so we get from zero to negative one now also zero and two is on the along the anti-diagonal so and it's from uh, player two so that's why we uh, decrease by one so from zero now it becomes negative one and and then uh, the first player comes back and then it marks a sec uh, the third column and third row and third column and then we look at the row and then it increase by one and then for column also increase by one and then now become from uh, it goes from zero to one and from negative one to one and negative one to zero and because in uh the third row and third, i mean the this uh sorry about that this is a coordinate two and two is on the diagonal and that's why uh and also from a uh, player one so we increase the diagonal by one so now it's two and then we move along and it comes back with um second player and it marks on uh, one and one, which is the second row and second column, as you can see. And then we decrease by one and then decrease by one from that as well. So originally it was zero, zero. Now it's negative one and negative one. And then we move again from uh, the first. Uh, so after the move from uh, player one, and as you can see, uh, we updated that. Um, the third row and then also the first column and also they increase increment by one and it looks like this is the game stop yet finished at that point so let's move along and uh, as you probably can guess that uh, after the second player's move and then uh, some some decrement decrement uh, from the second row and also the first column and then after that um we have a winner after the the next move from the player one so the third row and also the second column because whenever there is a move uh the algorithm checks that is that equal to the number of rows and uh, is that equal to the to the end and in this case yes because um because after this move it has the player one already mark um three times on the third on the third row that's why player one wins i mean the player player one could win 
uh, if he mark three times on diagonal or three times in the anti diagonal or three times in the columns, any of any one of the columns. So, but in this case, it's three times in the third row. That's why it wins. So this is a lot more efficient because we only need to keep track of uh, uh, the number of rows and number of columns, one diagonal and one anti-diagonal. As you can see, this is a lot more efficient than the prior approach because um, we don't have to go through the entire grid and uh, we have a lot uh, less variable to track, keep track of. And uh, in terms of the time complexity, it's uh, just a big old one because for every move, we mark a particular row, column, anti-diagonal, diagonal in a constant time. And for space complexity, uh, because we use a list or array, a row and column on the same size of n, variable, diagonal, anti-diagonal use a, a constant extra space. So uh, this method is a lot more efficient and we will implement that together. Let me remove this code and then I will uh, continue Continue the recording after I, I finish implement it so you can see how it works out on the Python EP. So I have uh, leave all the, the code in this uh, uh, the Google Colab and then you can feel free to browse the code. I will, I will leave uh, the link to this code in the description down below. Now I'm gonna clear it all up and then uh, start to implement uh, the, the more efficient approach that we just talked about. So as you can see, uh, the initialization setup is a bit different. We only need to keep track of the number uh, that I have a row. Uh, also have a column. So we have a row, have a n, row and n spot for the rows and n spot for the columns. And only one variable for the diagonal, one variable for the anti-diagonal. And um, yeah, so as you can see, uh, the, when the player is equal to one, we will increment, it will increase. Uh, for the particular row counting and also for the particular column. Sorry, so that this one should be a column counting. And for the diagonal and anti diagonal, that's a bit tricky. You have to look at the column index and row index. And um, yeah, I. So if the row is equal to the column, that means that we are on the diagonal, we increase. And because it's the player one right now, and uh, we'll increase the diagonal count by one. And at the same time, uh, we can check the anti-diagonal as we talked before. For the anti-diagonal, the sum, the sum of these two indexes is equal to n minus one. And uh, in that case, we will increase the anti-diagonal by one. So uh, similar to uh, the player number two, basically instead of incrementing, we will be um, decreasing it. Okay, so, and then after that, we will check any one of this, uh, after this updating, uh, we will check whether is, is there any any one of the spot is equal to the to the n? And I mean in this case for the three by three broad we with three to see if that any one of the spot equals to three and that player wins, right? And actually we can save a little bit one, one time in here. Right after we updating it, we can just check it right away. So if if that is equal to uh, so n is equal, I'm too lazy to type uh, the keyword cell. So I just grab it to assign to the self dot n is a grab it a new variable name uh, needed. Okay, that's how much we need it for the player to win. So if uh, the count after updating is equal to needed, and then we can terminate the game. So we don't have to do the rest. That will save a bit of runtime. And uh, in this case, it will be column. And uh, in that case, it will be, in this if statement, what we can do is,
So that's pretty much it. Uh, after each of the updating, we are checking to see uh, any particular row is, is some to be something we needed. And also for the same for the column, not the sum, uh, the counting at that, at that point after the move. And uh, I, if it's equal to what we needed, and then we terminate the rest and then just return the player, uh, the winner. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much basically it. And then we will do the same thing for the second player. And again, instead of increasing, we would decrease it. Okay. Decreasing here. here. And uh, we are not checking the positive side, we're checking the negative side in this time for the second player. Because the second player is going, the number is going down. And after fixing some typos, and for example, um, in here, and here, and also fixing the sky over here, and fixing the sky over here, and also, and most importantly, if none of them are returns, and we have to return a zero because no one wins, that means. And then we run that, and it works. It's pretty efficient. So, uh, that's so much for my um, solution to this question. I hope you like it. If you do, hopefully uh, you can like and like this video and subscribe to the channel. And uh, I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.